So you're ready to make your offer on a commercial property. What are you going to base your offer on? What information? If you're going to use the broker brochure, it's glossy, it's beautiful, it has the price, it has all the information needed. Are you going to use this? No way. Are you going to use the seller's financials? I have three years of it. Are you going to solely base your offer on this? No way. If you use the broker brochure to base your offers, guess what? You're going to overpay. If you solely base your offer on the seller's three years of financials, guess what? You're going to experience lower cash flow and lower returns on investment. So the question is, what do you use to base your offer on? Well, that's what today's videos are. Hi, I'm Peter Harris of Commercial Property Advisors. I am author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies, and I'm also author of my new book, Commercial Real Estate for Beginners. I'm also a coach and mentor to many commercial real estate investors all across the great nation of ours. Today, you're going to learn how to make offers on commercial property, and also, you're going to learn things that no classroom will teach when making offers on commercial property. I guarantee you. Secondly, I'm going to give you the absolute essentials in hand to make the best offers, to make smart offers. And this does not apply to single family. It only applies to commercial. Did you know that there are four phases, four perspectives that you have to go through before you can make an offer? I'll share with you what those four phases are. And number four, if you follow steps one, two, and three, you're going to avoid overpaying on your commercial property and avoiding day one negative cash flow, guaranteed. And lastly, number five, I'm going to give you a download link at the end of the video that you can download. It's going to walk you through step by step, one, two, three, ABC, how to come up with your offer price. All right? All right, let's get started. Here are the four phases of making an offer on a commercial property. These are the very things that we walk through our students each and every way. Okay, so these four phases of making an offer are four different perspectives of looking at the deal. And you must do this or you're going to overpay, you're going to under cash flow, or you won't be happy with investment. That simple. So you have to go through this process. Let's go through it. Through it. All right, so the broker brochure. I showed you before. It's a pretty... Uh, brochures, it's uh, multi-pages, there's beautiful pictures, there's numbers in there, there's a price in there, there's demographic information in there. That's phase one, okay? That is phase one. Next is the seller financials. Usually we get three years of seller financials showing what the income and expense has been for the last three years with an NOI at the bottom, right? That's phase two. Phase three is a performa. A performa is a best case um, scenario. Most times a broker, the broker brochure will have the performa in it. However, in this case, this is your performa. This is based upon your research, basically where the rents can go in your opinion, based upon uh, where the expenses can be reduced to in your opinion. This is, this is your performa, not the broker's performa. You can start with the broker performance to calculate this, but this is your based upon your research, okay? And this is phase three. Phase four is your offer, is based upon your numbers, is based upon your goals, okay? So phase one is the broker. Phase two is information from the seller. Phase three is your performa. And phase four is the numbers based upon your information and your goals, all right? So... That, that is uh, the, the four phases of making an offer in a commercial property. The next thing I want to do is lay out for you the essential things you must have in hand before you make an offer. Let's go there next. There are eight essential things you need in hand to have before you make an offer on commercial real estate. Let's go over those. Number one is income. You need to know what the income is on the, on the last 12 months, the last three years, and including the current month. Absolutely essential. Number two is expenses. You need to know what the expenses are. This, uh, this category here is the one that most new investors really mess up on. 
right? So you really have to uh, learn how to zero in on the expenses. Net operating income or NOI. From all my videos, everyone out there, you, you all know uh, I preach how important this number is. As the NOI goes up for a certain commercial property, the value goes up. As the NOI goes down, property value goes down. So this is the driver of your commercial property value. This is how you force appreciation, right? Next is mortgage. Why is the mortgage important at this point? It's because of this, watch. Income minus expenses equals NOI. NOI minus mortgage is your cash flow, right? So you have to have your cash flow here. I mean, you have to have your mortgage here to determine what your cash flow. So what I recommend you do here is you take your deal and you send it to a couple of lenders and have them give you what the down payment would be, what the interest rate would be, things like that, so you can calculate what the mortgage payments would be for the year. Got it? Okay. Next is cash flow. That's a given. We all know that's important. Next is cash and cash return. This is the term that determines how fast your money is moving. A high cash and cash return means your money is moving fast. A low cash and cash return is not so exciting. Your money stays in investment for a long time, right? We like to say, uh, in, in our investments, we like to uh, target a double digit cash and cash return. It is possible. Don't let anyone else tell you that. Next is cap rate. Cap rate is defined as if you were to pay all cash for your property, what would that return on investment look like? What percentage would that be? That's what cap rate is. So it's, a, it's an industry wide, widely used term uh, to help you value your deals, right? Oh, before I get the capital expenses here, um, all these seven terms here, if you need to review, watch this video here. It's called the seven commercial estate terms you should know. So the link for this video is going to appear. Go ahead and watch it, right, if you need to review on all these things. All right, so the last category that you need to have before you make an offer is an idea of what your CapEx or capital expense is going to be. Do you need a new roof? Do you need to uh, repair the stairs? Do you need all new appliances? Do you need to repair the sidewalks or the parking lot? Have an idea of what these are before you make your offer. All right? Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the four different phases using all of these eight terms. All right? I see you there next. Let's start here. All right? So on one side, we have all of, these, all of the essentials to make an offer. And on this side, we have the four phases to uh, be, need to go through and evaluate before you make the offer. How do you blend all of, both of these together? That's what we're going to discuss right now. So number one, I'd like to start from phase one, the broker brochure, right? It is an introduction to the deal. It is a beautiful and pretty um, sales tool. And the purpose of this document is to invoke emotion, to, to make you take action. And we all know from just life experience that as emotion goes up, intelligent, intelligence goes down. Therefore, we do not make offers based upon your broker brochure. Got it? All right. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, let's just choose a, uh, an essential here, income. Do you believe, what should you believe more is the more accurate uh, income, the broker brochure or the seller? Of course, it would be the seller, right? Which one do you believe uh, more to be the more accurate income? The seller's income or the income that you, that you decide the income is? Of course, it would be based upon your research, right? So you can see from here to here, we get more and more believable, right? So again, we can then make offers based upon the broker brochure. Next is the seller's financials, right? This is from the seller's perspective. How accurate are the seller's financials, right? So they're going to give you a pretty good-looking uh, Excel spreadsheet, uh, three years of financials. Uh, how much of that can you can you use to 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 make your offer? You can use quite a bit of it, right? So it's a it's a great uh, a document to use to see how the seller has been performing on the property. Not necessarily how you're going to perform, but how the seller's been performing for the last three years, right? Let's look at the seller's motive. His motive in his financials is to make the numbers good enough for the property to sell. That's his motive, right? So would you rather use the seller's financials or what you come up with? Of course, what you come up with, okay? All right, follow me so far? Okay, now, the performa, okay? Now, again, the performa 
you're probably going to begin using the performer from the broker. It's a good guide. It's a good guide to get started. But this performer that I'm referring to, this proje these projected numbers, you know, what the rents could be in the future, right, if you just raise them or if you do renovations and raise them, this research comes from you. You have to do this research, right? This is, a, this is an integral part of doing before you make an offer. The reason why is you need a target. You can't just buy the property and just, just cash flow. You want to have a target, something to reach for, right? And also, if you can do this uh, performer well, it will help you uh, uh, decide on a, on a precise exit strategy, okay? And lastly, uh, your offer. This is what I call the truth, right? Now, when to determine this, you're going to have to determine what you think and you believe based upon your research, what the income, what the income is, what the expenses are, what the actual NOI that you think you can achieve on their property, right? Uh, you're going to do your research on a mortgage. You're going to calculate your own cash flow that works for you. You're going to have come up with a cash or cash return that you're happy with. You're going to come up with a cap rate, right? Cap rate that you know you can live with. And then you're going to calculate your own capital expenses. Not believing what the broker did or pro broker produces or what the seller has done, but you're going to calculate capital expenses that works for you. If you need a new roof, you're going to throw those numbers in there. If you need to redo the parking lot, you're going to throw those numbers in there. Okay? All right. So again, these, your, this phase four is the truth, is based upon your goals, is from your perspective, and lastly, I want you to be conservative here, okay? Don't, don't rely too much on these here. Uh, rely mainly on being conservative and come up, coming up with your numbers, all right? Okay, that's what I want to share here. Now, in the last part, let's move forward and let's make an offer based upon these last three videos. All right, here we are, the last part. Let me quickly show you how to make your offer, okay? based upon the four different perspectives and all of those essential elements. All right, so first of all, we need goals, right? So what are your goals when making offers? I'm gonna give them to you. Here are your goals. Number one is, I want your cash flow to be positive, right? That's important, right? Number two, I want your cash or cash return, your cash or cash return to be uh, at least double digits, okay? Uh, number three, uh, I want your deal to have upside potential. What do I mean by that? Upside potential means that you have the ability to raise rents over time. You have the ability to maybe reduce expenses. Perhaps you have the ability to charge back the tenants for all the utilities, right? All three of those are going to increase your NOI. And remember, when your NOI goes up, so does the property value, okay? Really important to uh, understand that fact. So upside potential is important. Well, how do you know if your deal has upside potential? How do you know? It's because of this, this perspective, okay? Phase three, performa. You've done your performa evaluation, and that will tell you how much upside potential is there. Got it? Okay, that's why this is important. And lastly, you want to be in a stable and growing neighborhood. You don't want to invest in a neighborhood that's struggling or contracting or people are leaving. That's never good for commercial real estate. Okay? All right. Next, let's talk about the, the essentials. Where you want to be on each of these eight essentials. Number one, the income. Your concern is not what the a broker says, not what the seller gives you, not what the performer, but what's been actually collected. Okay? That's what you base your offer on. What's been collected? Not the other stuff. What's been collected? Show me the money. Expenses. You want to use uh, expenses in your offer that are industry standards, right? You want to get help from your advisors on establishing expenses. Perhaps have a property manager help you determine what expenses are. Again, I'll say this is the part that most newbies mess up. They, they tend to underestimate the expenses. You do that, and you're going to have less cash flow and a lower cash and cash return. Okay? So this can be a, uh, a tough one here. So you need some help for that, with that one. NOI, right? So your NOI uh, should be based on the above, okay? Should be based upon the income collected and the industry standard expenses or expenses that your advisor or your property manager help you come up with, okay? All right, 
mortgage. Get to lender reviews to look at your deal and they can give you just uh, just you know uh, their their mortgage terms just a just a projection so you can figure out what the cash flow will be now cash flow uh, does it excite you right when you do your evaluation based upon your offer does it excite you if it doesn't you need to either make a better offer or don't do the deal cash and cash return double digit return you will have people brokers everyone out there will tell you it's not possible it is possible our students are doing it every single month. Double digit returns. Cap rate. Now, cap rates are market dependent. For example, on the West Coast, for example, in the Bay Area, we're talking four, five percent cap rates. Midwest, maybe you get six, seven, eight percent cap rates. On the Far East Coast, maybe you're down to four or five percent cap rates again. So they're market dependent. Your goal when making your offer, right, your offer cap rate needs to be higher than the market cap rate okay all right now again if you want to get further understanding of how this works you need to watch the video that i talked about earlier called the seven commercial estate terms you should know watch that video and review it all right capital expenses really important when you make your offer you need to have a contractor give you quotes on what's needed on the property don't believe that don't believe that only believe what the contractor gives you and then after you get the quotes for, from the contractor on what, on what the property's needs are, the question is, is, this still, is the deal still worth doing? Okay? Answer that question. All right. So if you do all the above, here's the end result. The end result is you're going to avoid overpaying, number one. Number two, you're going to avoid day one negative cash flow, most likely. And number three, you're going to get credibility. Your, your credibility is going to increase because this is what all the professionals do, right? All the big boys, all the really good in, in, uh, investors, that's what they do. That's, this is what we teach at our company here, right? So it's going to increase your credibility, and that's a good thing. The last thing I want to do with you today is I want to give you a bonus. It's a download of just a, a PDF that's going to break down for you how to come up with the actual numerical offer, okay? What number, is it 1.2 million, is it, is it 700,000, is it 250,000? So this document that you're gonna download is gonna show you how to come up with that number. All right, okay, hope you enjoyed the how to make an offer on commercial property. If you want more videos like this, please go into our website, commercialpropertyadvisors.com. Thank you so much for your time today. I'll see you at the next video.